Are you tired of pest and disease ruining your beautiful garden? Do you need a safe and effective solution to cleaning around the garden? If you do, there's a common household product that you can use as your secret weapon. This product can help you have a healthy and flourishing garden. Hydrogen peroxide. In this video, we'll explore the many surprising benefits of hydrogen peroxide for gardeners, and we'll also dispel any myths or misconceptions about using this in the garden. So break out your gardening gloves and a bottle of peroxide. Hi, I'm Dr. Tom Warren, and you're watching The Plant Doctor. Let's get started. You may be wondering why we would use a topical antiseptic in the garden, and also be wondering, is it safe to use? After all, it is a chemical. But see, there's good chemicals and there's bad chemicals. Let's talk about what is hydrogen peroxide. Hydrogen peroxide is h 2 O2. So it's a water with an extra oxygen molecule attached to it. That extra oxygen molecule is extremely volatile. So when it comes in contact with anything organic, not organic in USDA organic sense, but something that is has carbon in it and is living or decomposing, it is going to release that oxygen molecule. And that oxygen molecule is a great antiseptic. It's made of two things that humans need to live. It's made of water and it's made of oxygen. So it's perfectly safe to use in the garden when used in the right amounts. Hydrogen peroxide is a great cleaner. So what I'll do is I'll take a paper towel and I'll clean off all my hand tools. So a lot of times when we prune, we unknowingly transmit pathogens from one plant to another. So if you're pruning from one plant to the next and a plant looks a little bit diseased, one thing you can do is take peroxide. We're not going to dilute this peroxide. So this is 3% solution hydrogen peroxide and clean your tools. So the same can be said for hand trials as well. If you're having a problem with pathogens in your potting media, so you've got one pot that looks bad and you've used a hand trial in that pot, make sure to clean it off really good with some hydrogen peroxide. You can also use peroxide to clean out pots if you want to save pots. So I'm in the greenhouse here at Sneed State where I work full time. And I'm a big proponent in the program of not having single use plastics. We try our best to use these year after year after year and then try to recycle them when they're no longer usable. But from one season to the next, what we'll do is we'll wipe these out really good with hydrogen peroxide because if there's any pathogens in here, we don't want these pathogens to lay dormant in the pot all winter and we come out next spring put fresh potting mix in here and we're spreading pathogens to the new plants that we're planting in here so we always make sure to clean them we go through a ton of plastics here and so we're trying to do our part to lower our environmental impact with single-use plastics and we're trying to reuse these but we're going to clean them with hydrogen peroxide first if you have a potting barn or a greenhouse another thing you can do if you start to get algae in and around your sidewalls of your greenhouse you can take some here again three percent solution we're not going to dilute it down and you can wipe this down and it will come right off so you can see right here all the junk that comes off now doing it this way just by putting it on a paper towel and scrubbing it's labor intensive what you can do is put it in a one gallon sprayer put your peroxide in a one gallon sprayer spray the sidewalls let it sit for a day or two come back with a hose rinse it off and all that algae will be gone. We can use peroxide as a safe way to control root rot in plants. So two typical pathogens we see with root rot are Pythium and Rhizoctonia. It really doesn't matter which one it is, but what you wanna do, if you can, if it's a potted plant, is pull out the plant and look at the roots. So these are healthy roots, so they're white, and if I pull on them, they don't break real easily. If you have a root rot issue, what you're going to see is the roots are going to be brownish or even black and they fall apart very, very easily. So the, even the, the potting mix would be enough to kind of break the roots off and, and they would fall down off of the plant. So how do we treat for root rot? So we're gonna to mix together a solution of one ounce, 3% hydrogen peroxide to 10 ounces of water. Once we have our solution, what you'll do is simply water in with that solution. So what is this going to do? That extra oxygen atom that we talked about earlier, it's going to release, it's going to kill any fungus or bacteria in the soil. And one thing that I wanna be perfectly clear about here, it's not all rainbows and unicorns with peroxide. Peroxide is gonna kill all of the bacteria. There's bacteria that's beneficial to plants as well. It actually helps them grab nutrients out of the soil and benefits the plant. We're, we're killing it all. But most of the bad bacteria for plants are anaerobic bacteria. 
And so once you use this solution, if you can figure out a way to make your soil more aerobic by maybe loosening up the root ball or not watering as often, that's going to help keep some of those bad bacteria out. And once that happens, the good bacteria will come back into the soil media slowly but surely, and your plant should benefit from it. Another way we can use peroxide in the garden is to control insects. In particular, three types of insects. If you're having issues with aphids, white flies, or fungus gnats, we can use peroxide to control them. So that same 10 to one mixture that we used before, all we want to do is put that into a spray bottle. And once we have it in the spray bottle, we can go around to our different plants and then begin to spray the leaves. So you just want an even coating of this mixture on the leaves. Now what you may find is this, you, you're going to have to do this repeatedly. Every seven to 14 days, you're gonna to have to go out and spray peroxide for probably 21 to 28 days. So you're looking at three or four applications of this. The reason is we're trying to get all of those different bugs in each of their different life cycles. So you got the egg stage, the nymph stage, the larva, the adult, whatever life cycle that particular insect has. Certain stages are gonna be able to survive this mixture, but if we stay with it for a series of applications, you can use this 10 to one mixture of peroxide to control those types of insects. If you have potting mix that has gone anaerobic, one thing you can do is take that 10 to one mixture we talked about earlier, so 10 parts water to one part 3% hydrogen peroxide. You can take that and pour it over the top of your anaerobic soil and it'll help aerate the soil, it'll help get rid of those bad pathogens and it'll rejuvenate that potting mix. So how do you know if your soil's anaerobic? So I've got some here, I had a uh, elephant ear, it's got fungus gnats all in it. It got too wet, the elephant ear rotted, and the soil is just nasty, has a, has a foul smell to it. It doesn't smell like fresh potting mix. You can see how mushy it is. This soil went anaerobic. So one thing we can do to eliminate the anaerobic properties of this potting media is simply take this 10 to one mixture, pour it in over the top, and it'll rejuvenate the soil, providing oxygen in the media and eliminating some of those bad fungal pathogens. There's two methods we can use to help increase the germination rate of seeds by using water and peroxide. There's two things that seeds need in order to germinate. They need water and they need oxygen. So if we go back to the beginning of the video, what two components was peroxide made of? A water molecule and oxygen. This is perfect. So we have our same solution here, 10 parts water to one part 3% hydrogen peroxide. And you can simply take your seeds, I've got some bean seeds here, place them in that solution, let them soak overnight, and then the next day go plant them and you're going to see increased germination rates. Another method you can use is what's referred to as the paper towel method or the, the bag method or the towel bag method. There's a couple different names to it, but the, the premise is all pretty much the same. So you're going to take a paper towel, put your seeds on the paper towel, spray the paper towel down till it's moist with that same solution, that 10 to one peroxide solution. And then you're going to put the paper towel into the plastic bag. And you're gonna put that on a, on a counter somewhere, preferably in a window so it can get a little bit of heat from the sun. And in three or four days, you can open that up and your seeds are starting to germinate. And then at that point, you can put them in a pot or out in the garden or wherever you need them. I feel like we've only begun to touch on what we can use peroxide for in the garden, in the landscape, in the greenhouse setting. I'm sure that you personally have used peroxide for something in the garden. If you have, and we haven't talked about it here in this video, please leave it down in the description below. Share your knowledge with others. Also, if you have questions about what we did today, leave those down in the comments below. I will do my best to answer those. Guys, as always, thank you for watching The Plant Doctor, and until next time, Happy gardening.